Hi, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been a while since I last posted. Uh, I was on uh, Christmas, and I know it's January 3rd now, and it's, there's been a gap. Uh, I've been stuck in bed the last five days or so, terribly sick, and I'm finally getting back to it and posting a video. And I just want to say, hopefully my voice is back to sounding normal. I'm not sure if my brain is still functioning with the right amount of clarity that I, I typically prefer when posting a video, but nonetheless, I'm moving forward. And uh, <clears throat> today... I want to tell you that if if you are a supporter of XRP, if you are a fan of Ripple, you are the bad guy. You are public enemy number one, at least in the eyes of the early Bitcoiners, many of them anyway. Uh, many of them, as, as you, you, you may already be aware, they're frankly, they come from an anarchist point of view. They come from a down with the banks, down with government point of view. Now, I've never shared that mentality. And... Compared to these people, I'm late to the game in crypto. I have uh, i don't know if you want to call me a noob anymore. I've been around for over a year, and I've uh, become very well-versed in particular with what Ripple's doing, with uh, how XRP is being positioned by uh, various developers. Uh, I've become very well-versed in that for, for over a year. I, I, I tell you, I don't think there's been a day that's gone by where I haven't spent at least an hour on something crypto slash XRP related, whether it's just reading, researching, watching YouTubers, lots of videos, whatever it may be. And so I'm, I'm just heavily interested in it, and it's it's a, a hobby, an interest, a strong passion, whatever you want to call it. And so I, I don't know that I'm a noob anymore. I think I know what I'm talking about on this point. <clears throat> but um, when I got started, <laughs> you know, I didn't know the difference from one cryptocurrency to the next, what they were positioned to do, what the purpose of them all were. And there were, at this point, I'll tell you, there are several U YouTubers or people in the crypto space. Uh, I think at least three of them have YouTube channels, which I'm going to pull up here in a second. But there are f several that I followed early on, and you may have as well when you jumped into crypto, or maybe you still do. And I do still actually follow all four of them, which is actually in part what, what's leading me to, uh, to post this video. What I, I'm going to get to the meat of it here in just a minute. But I was following here, I'll just start over here, one of the most famous ones, Andreas uh, Antonopoulos, 165,000 subscribers, uh, very knowledgeable. Um, he's one of the people that helped me to first understand through watching all of his content. He's a public speaker also uh, on Bitcoin all over the world. He's one of the people that really helped me very early on get a grasp of what is the technology, what's the, the, the real purpose of it. And why are people throwing money into it? And so, I, I again, one of the, the very first people that I followed, and I, I could appreciate that. Um, I, I just, I viewed him, and I'll hear, here's another one, Data Dash. Uh, this guy, um, I'm a fan of this guy also. He's got 316,000 subscribers on YouTube. I think he's got the biggest uh, cryptocurrency channel on YouTube. A yeah, pretty level-headed guy. He does talk about other markets, not just cryptocurrencies, but it's it's um, definitely cryptocurrency-centric, I'll say that. He's, he's heavy on the crypto. And he helps me learn a lot as well. And then there's a guy like um, Trace Mayer. I mean, I think he technically has a YouTube channel, but he doesn't really post a whole lot. I think I came across it once. <laughs> so I just pulled up his actual website instead just to cite him. And he jumped in, originally invested in Bitcoin, and it was $0.05, cents, and he was one of the strongest proponents and realized just how earth-shattering, game-changing it can be to um, financial sovereignty, to to various markets, so what, what, it, what it would just mean for value in general, how we view it, how it how it um, trades hands, you know, how, how we view fiat currency. He got the big picture. And so I'm listening to all these guys, and I was also listening to uh, Crypto's News. He's another one of the guys that early on I was, I was a big fan of. Uh, it comes across as a really nice, really likable guy. He's got 119,000 subscribers at this point. So all four of these guys I citing, I started following in November of 2017. And um, I got on board with it. And not that I just drank the Kool-Aid. Uh, I think cryptocurrencies are here to stay. I, I don't think that the asset class is going to disappear ever. And there are a number of reasons for that I'm not going to delve into within this video. But in terms of uh, their vision, the big picture, there being this one world currency, Bitcoin, I, I don't believe that's going to be the case. And perhaps they do. I, I think that they're, I, could, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but from everything I've watched from them, they seem to believe that Bitcoin's the one, that's that, and uh, you know, just let time pass and eventually, inevitably, that's what's going to happen. And I, I think that uh, 
the more time passes, the more it becomes evident that's that's just not the case. Now, it's not to say I disagree fundamentally with a lot of what they're saying. I think that there's true value in a peer-to-peer uh, cryptocurrency when there's 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 no counterpart, there's no central authority that can tell you yes, you can do this transaction, no, you cannot conduct this transaction. Of course, there's that, that ideologically that sounds fantastic. I'm just not coming from the anarchist point of view, the down with banks, down with government point of view that some of these people are. Okay. And so, um, you know, I, I, I researched further, and then, of course, like, it's like anybody did their due diligence when they got into the crypto space, eventually you go down the top 10, 20, 30 cryptocurrencies on coin market cap, and you come across XRP early on, and if you researched and you found out what it did, you're like, oh, wow. So this is a cryptocurrency. It's, it's not being positioned to be a, a peer-to-peer currency, although it could be utilized as that. It's decentralized technology, sure. But it's being positioned, at least by Ripple, the strongest cheerleader for XRP, as, as a mechanism for settlement. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And it looks like, you know, we're in the early stages at that point. Um, XRapid had been launched in beta, not in production, but in beta at that point. And XCurrent was in production at that point. And I thought, wow, this is actually like real-world adoption. This, could be, this is exciting. This could actually go somewhere. It didn't mean that I was against peer-to-peer currencies. They're not mutually exclusive in my mind. You know, there, it's not going to be a winner-take-all. I don't see one as competing with the other. I mean, fine, in terms of market cap, if you want to measure it that way. But nobody's... Posi- like, okay, people are positioning Bitcoin to be used as a peer-to-peer uh, currency so that you, you don't need central authority. Okay, fine. XRP could do that. Fine. Nobody is positioning it to, to be used in that capacity. So in that sense, not a competitor. Not a competitor. Clear as day. Um, and, and so, you know, over the last few days, it's just been, I, I've been a bit disappointed. So I'm going to pull this up. On a personal level, I still like this guy. This guy, his name's Omar. He's, he runs Crypto's news channel. If you ever watch his stuff, you know he comes off as like a super likable guy, charismatic. And I, I agree with him on, on a lot of the stuff in terms of the value of cryptocurrencies and, you know, re, you know not needing a central authority to conduct uh, transactions of value. Okay, all on board with that, okay? But there are a few things that he posted on Twitter, which I'm on regularly, and I'll, I'll just read a few of them to you. And the first couple I didn't respond to. Um, and, you know, most of the time in following this guy, he said some inaccuracies about XRP in the past, whatever. He, I, don't, I'm, I still don't know if he's just ignorant on the subject, as in he literally doesn't know what he's saying is incorrect, or if his ideology is swaying him to say untruths. I certainly hope that's not the case. I'm not going to make an assumption, but it's one or the other. It has to be. <laughs> and so on December 30th, he wrote, If you want to continue to be enslaved by banks, then by all means buy XRP. If you want freedom to own your own money and build permissionlessly, by BTC and ETH. So, <laughs> if you're if you're if you're an XRP proponent like I am, you want to be. I want apparently I want to be enslaved by banks. Never mind that I just told you I'm cool with peer to peer cryptocurrencies. I, I would love to see that come to fruition. We're not there. There's not enough liquidity. It's not being adopted on that scale yet. I mean, it could be a decades long thing for that to happen. I'm still a proponent for it. But in the meantime, the fact that I would like banks to operate more efficiently means that I want to be enslaved by banks. Let's move on to the next tweet. Uh, it was later in that day. He wrote, XRP fanatics remind me of XBitConnect fanatics. The truth that XRP is a security is blinded by their veiled money lusting eyes. If Ripple Labs goes under, how many developers will exist for XRP? Well, on the last point, I'll be happy to answer that. How many developers will exist for XRP if Ripple goes under? A lot. <laughs> there are a lot of developers. I've cited them in a few of my previous videos. I've only posted six videos prior to this. But I've said a couple times already, there's R3, there's, there's Omni, there's Coil, and there are more. There's obviously the XRP uh, tip bot. You know, that, that's, that's software that <laughs> serves an actual purpose. Like, people are using this to, to get, send value to other users as a thank you as, wow, I like what you posted. You know, it, it frequently used for that. That's just another example. But uh, apparently we're just, in his mind, the same as BitConnect fanatics. Ex-BitConnect fanatics. And so I just, I read that, and I rolled my eyes, and I moved on with my day. And then the other day, he posted another one. Let me scroll up here. Get it on the screen. It's towards the top, I think. Uh, Yeah, here it is. And it's just one of the bullet points in this tweet from yesterday, January 2nd. He wrote, XRP is a supply-centralized, banker-happy scam coin for noobs. Oh my god. <laughs> is this, this is not making you want to rip your hair out. It's, it's so absurd. 
And as a fan of, of, of Crypto's news, Omar here, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys it was very disappointing to read this because what he's doing, and I've got a thick skin, so it's not that I'm, I'm taking this personally, but this is a turnoff for me, certainly, as a viewer of his, his channel. You know, th- this doesn't make me want to watch his, his YouTube videos. I'm a subscriber of his on YouTube. I'm, I'm a follower of his on, on Twitter. It doesn't make me want to read any of this. And I, I, maybe I will rethink it. I, I don't know. And it's just a shame because I've enjoyed the content. I appreciate what I've learned from this guy. And I've been open-minded. Um, I, I realize I, I came into the space a little over a year ago not knowing anything, just, just open-minded. And, and so what I've done is I have my opinions, but they're based on facts. And I believe that... Uh, his um, his his opinions are based on ideology, and that's just a different way of of viewing the world. It's a, it's a different way of of conducting yourself in life. I I think my way is better, and so I, I actually responded with with such messaging via Twitter here. Um, you can read it if you want. I'm not going to pull it for the sake of the video because I'm just talking here. <laughs> but don't worry, we're a bunch of tweets beyond what I've already done. Hopefully, um, but it's 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 mind boggling to me that. Somebody could be so open-minded to something, it'd be so forward-thinking, see the, the, the potential world-changing technology within the technology of Bitcoin, but then to be so close-minded when it comes to something as innocent as faster settlement for banks. That's what we're talking about here, realistically. We're talking about, because well, in his mind, he's thinking about, he's thinking about Ripple. He's thinking about what Ripple is doing with XRP, and he must view it as a threat to Bitcoin because if you don't view it as a threat to Bitcoin, then why are you writing stuff like this? Like They're not being positioned to compete with each other, mind you, which is why I think it's so silly. But perhaps that comes from um, from people like, like Omar here not understanding uh, what Ripple is doing in positioning XRP. They're, they're completely different things. Your vision, I, w- I would say to Omar, he's never going to watch this video, but I would say, Omar... Your vision of what Bitcoin can be, I think it's going to take a long time to develop. I, I, it could, could be over a span of decades, potentially. And I'm not saying it's not going to happen in terms of cryptocurrencies being used uh, in, in, potentially in place of fiat in some instances, where, especially in third world countries where there's rampant inflation and such, all that type of stuff. That can happen. I, I believe that actually can happen. But in the short term here, right now, we can get faster settlement times, which means that end users... People that that are making cross-border transactions from nation to nation, they can realize uh, savings and quicker settlement times today with existing technology today. And the reason this is important is the people that realize these savings, they realize the faster settlement times, they do not have to invest in any, crypt- any cryptocurrencies whatsoever. XRP is to be used behind the scenes, at least as Ripple intends to use it, behind the scenes uh, via the X Rapid platforms, with, with, which links uh, exchanges that are that are tied to X Rapid, so that's that's what it is. And I want to ask, how is that evil? How is faster settlement for banks a threat to your worldview? How? How is that a threat to you? How is it going to stop if Bitcoin is the panacea you think it is? How is faster settlement times ever going to crush that? How? It's just completely different use cases, and it just boggles my mind that you could think of it like that. And so you might say, well, maybe he's aware that uh, the technology for XRP is, is better than Bitcoin's, and in my mind, it, frankly, it is. P- perhaps it's because people like him think that, uh, you know, okay, fine, if Lightning Network works, then you've got near, uh, nearly infinite scalability. That has yet to be proven. Maybe it will work. Maybe it will not. I'm not going to get into that. It's a conversation for a different time. But maybe he feels threatened because XRP uh, can achieve uh, nearly infinite scalability with the current technology without Lightning Network because it has payment channels built in. And you might think, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why he feels so threatened. Well, I don't think so. I don't think that guys like him have researched the technology behind XRP to even understand that. So (laughs) they're hating it for ideological reasons. And not only that, they don't understand the tech is actually better. For the purposes of speed, for the purposes of cost, and more, and, and electricity, obviously, you know, there's no mining, and it wasn't pre-mined. There, there was no mining process for XRP. It wasn't pre-mined. That's another thing these people, and it was never mined. <laughs> okay, it was all the uh, XRP in existence. It was created at the genesis of the XRP ledger. That's that. 
And so it's, it, it's just, it, it boggles the mind and it's, it's just really disappointing to see the people that I have followed speak so negatively about something that I'm passionate about, that I care about. It's just a disappointment. It's like, Omar, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. All right. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And I really wish you could be more open-minded on this because XRP is not the enemy of Bitcoin. It simply is not. You can like both and that's perfectly fine. And in fact, I would go so far as to say if if you if you if you say bad things about XRP and let's say that you actually harmed Ripple's progress in the the uh, deployment of XRapid in a material way, if you were actually able to pull that off, which it sounds like you do, if you were to pull that off, do you realize you'd actually be hurting people? Did you know that the people that will benefit from XRapid most and the use of XRP behind the scenes, the people that benefit from that most are those people in the world that are poorest. There are two remittance corridors that, in particular, just off the top of my head, that I know Ripple is focusing on for the production version of XRapid. One is the, the corridor, the U.S.-Mexico corridor, corridor. The other is the U.S.-Philippines corridor. Reasons being, and these are currently, without cryptocurrencies, very high traffic corridors. There's a lot of money flowing back and forth, although I'd argue most of it's from the U.S. to Mexico and from the U.S. to Philippines. Why is that happening? Well, there are a lot of um, immigrants, and again, I, I'm not, by the way, no political commentary here whatsoever, but it's a fact of the matter that there are a lot of immigrants in here, many of them illegal, and again, not to get into politics, but they are there, and a lot of that money is flowing out of the United States to uh, the poor countries, Mexico, Philippines, and it's going to support their families. Now, currently, it costs a lot to conduct these transactions. It's not because banks are taking advantage of, of these people that want to move money from U.S. to Mexico. It's not that they want to take advantage of them. It's that it's very expensive to conduct these transactions, whether you're a bank, a financial institution, a remittance company, whatever, you're, whatever you are. It's costly, and you have to turn a profit to some degree. That's not evil. You're providing a, a service for compensation, a much-needed service. You deserve some compensation. But again, there's a lot of manual labor that goes into this. And what XRapid and XCurrent do is they take that labor out of this. That's a big part of the reason the, the cost goes down. That's a big part. And there's other reasons, which I'm not getting into the video, the, the cost of dormant capital via Nostro Vostro accounts. That's a whole different topic. Not going to delve into that level of detail. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, by, by uh, implementing XCurrent, by implementing XRapid, you're going to reduce these costs. You can reduce them by upwards of 70%. And in, in, in a market, you know, in any market where there's competition, do you not think that's going to lower the cost to the end user, to the consumer, to the, to the immigrant workers in, in, in the United States, sending money back to their poor families in the other countries, do you not think that's going to lower the cost for them so that they can send more of their hard-earned cash to them? And so... If you want to stop, if you could magically, in your mind, if you could just like snap your fingers and suddenly Ripple's gone and XRP no longer exists, do you know how evil that would be in my mind? Like, th that's, that's wrong. You, you'd be hurting people. So not only is this at XRP not ideologically at odds with, with your, your beliefs, at least it shouldn't be. If it is, I, I, I'd like to talk with you further. Anybody that believes that, I think it shouldn't be viewed as ideologically uh, evil. It, it, it's just it's a it's a source for good on top of all of that. And so it just blows my mind that people can think that. But a lot of the people that are early to space, and he's, he's included, he's been around for however many years. That's what he thinks, and he's just he's just one of them. And again, I'm still following the guy. I, I, I wish well of him. I really do. I'll keep following him. I'll still be a fan for now. I don't, I, maybe he's going to push me far enough where I'm going to stop watching him. But it's just it's really disappointing to see uh, people that you've, you've thought highly of speak poorly of you. Because he's literally calling me, a, like, I am an XRP supporter. He's calling me a, a, a noob in this. <laughs> like, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Omar. I know a lot, about, a lot more about XRP than you. A whole lot more. And, um, and, and so, and Data Dash, he never really speaks bad about it. He's just, he said pretty innocuous statements, just like, uh, for fundamental ideological reasons, he's not an XRP supporter. And, and that's fine. If he's just going to disagree, he's not trashing XRP or anything like that. And then you get Trace Mayer. He actually, um, he was, this live stream right here, I watched this thing. It was actually really interesting because I still find Trace Mayer to be really insightful. I like the guy. I like what he's saying. A lot of it anyway. 
But he said something, and it, it goes back to either he's he's ignorant or he's being deceitful. I don't know which it is. It's it's one or the other. But in this particular podcast with with uh, Omar Crypto's News, he said that XRP can be frozen. And this is on I think December 11th. I think is when this was streamed live. And I'm I'm watching this and like ah come on guys, there's no way you can't know this at this point. And if if they really still don't know it, fine. But how can you not know that that's blatantly false? That's a fallacy. That is just wrong. And I heard the same thing from and, uh, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, and it was about half a year ago. I was I was streaming something as via YouTube as I was driving in my car on a highway, and he's he's talking about how XRP can be frozen and Ripple controls, and I was just like screaming. I was like, Ah, no, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. You're so smart, and how and I, I like I, I kind of in a way look up to you. You know, you're you're such an early pioneer of the Bitcoin space. How can you be uh, how can you be saying such garbage? And <laughs> And so that I had to simmer down and keep on driving. But it, it just boggles the mind. The XRP and BTC, they, they, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. Like they, they can both exist in harmony, okay? They really can. And so I think a lot of the developers are early on, though, in crypto... Uh, I think they have the same mindset. Like, you can look at, like, Coin Market Cap. It took them a while to take uh, the Ripple logo... Off the front page, I don't have to pull up here, it doesn't matter, but uh, they call out XRP, XRP as they should. Uh, exchanges have been following in suit, rather, just, just by and large, they've been following suit, and they've been, uh, instead of calling XRP Ripple, they're calling it XRP, as they should, and that and that's great. But then you get, like, for instance, I'm going to pull this up. <sighs> Kraken. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, look at this, okay? Look, I, I want to know who the heck is running this Twitter account. I'm just going to highlight this. See where I'm circling the mouse on the screen here under the official Kraken Exchange Twitter account? They called Ripple Nipple with an N. They wrote Nipple XRP. Not even You can't even make this stuff up. This is an actual exchange. This is an actual business. And they just want to... <laughs> what are they... To what end? Like, what is their end game doing stuff like this? They just want to, like, piss off, like, uh, all the members of the XRP community. Like, the, the number two... It was flopping back for two and three. The two, second or third largest uh, market cap. I'd still actually argue the second place if you include the escrow, which you should, really. So, really, the second largest uh, uh, coin in terms of market cap. You want to piss off everybody that's invested in that? I'm just like, what is wrong with you guys? And I could do... And I'm thinking about it. I might do a separate video just on Kraken because there's been enough nonsense on this Twitter account. I could probably talk about it for, like, 20 minutes. Not going to do it today, but I just thought I'd mention that. Just so you know, if you're on crack and you're giving them your money via uh, buys and sells, the, the, the fees associated with that, they think that your uh, your your uh, XRP is nipple. J- just so you know. Just so you know. Then you got um, CoinDesk here. They're, they have this, uh, this piece about their 10 most influential uh, in 2018. And... This is a joke, and so here's a few of them. Let's just read a few of them just for the sake of it. I don't know who Brenda Sparks I didn't read all these. Hester Pierce, she's part of the SAC. She's cool. Uh, Jeremy Allaire, don't know who that is. Anyway, but they, they, they um, display these as if they're trading cards, so they've got little traits here like the brains of the, the individual, the charisma, the fighting ability, which is freaking ridiculous anyway, but okay, that's, that's what they want to go with. And you go down here, XRP Army, because again, if you like XRP... You listening to this, you are a bad guy. You are you are not friendly. You are public enemy number one. And here's what they think of you. You're influential, but your brains are only a two. And I, they don't even say if the scale is the highest number I saw in any of these was nine. So your brains are a two out of nine, presumably, instead of ten. Uh, your charisma is two because, I mean, come on, charisma. You're not charismatic. You're not even likable. You like XRP. You're the bad guy. But wow, you can fight. And you're part of the XRP army. Not the XRP community. The XRP army. That's what they think of you. And then when you click on this, you can read the story here that this guy named David wrote. I did read this thing. I'm not saying you should because it's a piece of trash, by and large. It's not 100% um, anti-XRP, but let, let me tell you what. Like The vast majority of this piece, it's this guy complaining about how people in the XRP don't want to talk to him. And they don't want to talk to him because Coindesk has spread so much FUD uh, it's spread so much negativity about XRP. It's been made clear that uh, they are not fans of us, us, uh, you know, people that are excited about XRP and what Ripple's doing to uh, further the XRP ecosystem. So uh, he, he wrote this piece where he's just basically complaining about that. And um, 
and then to to make it seem as though he's truly open minded, you know, he talks about how. And he did acknowledge, just fine, uh, that uh, the complaint that everybody in the XRP community has, like, is, <clears throat> is that um, it's it's not that you know we have a problem with Bitcoin. It's it's that that we want to fight everybody. It's that the B- Bitcoin maximalists are seeking out the XRP people, beckoning them, and then XRP people are just defending their their coin. And that's been my experience, absolutely. That's what I've seen. I've been in the space over a year. That's absolutely what I've seen. You know, I'm, I tell you what, the people in the XRP community, by and large, we're not out there attacking Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency projects, other digital assets. We're not doing that. Those would be outlier instances. But it seems to be the norm for people within the Bitcoin community, especially the anarchist type, to jump in and just trash Ripple and trash XRP, and also on top of that, not even understand the technology behind it. But hey. That's what's actually happening here. Which brings me to one of my last points. I just want to say, thankfully, uh, the adults are entering the room. We've got, you know, this is a, this is a, one of the, the original articles about uh, BACT being launched. Uh, Intercontinental Exchange, ICE, which owns New York Stock Exchange, launching the BACT platform uh, for, for cryptocurrencies. And uh, this is a picture of, on the left here, this guy, he's the uh, CEO, I think it's said down here, what, of, of ICE, right? Yeah, that's right. And then his wife here, see, she'll be the CEO, or she is the CEO of, of BACT. And uh, they're taking a more pragmatic approach. It's not that they're pro or anti-specific coins. They haven't verbalized that, that I've seen anyway, but they get the big picture. They get that there's utility for certain coins. They get that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. And they're not just writing hit pieces on anything or anyone, uh, the XRP community or otherwise. And I think <laughs> I think as, as, as things develop, I think it's going to become more and more clear that XRP is here to stay. It has real utility. It will help better people's lives. And a ton of developers are going to continue to build on top of the XRP ledger. That's going to happen. So, you know... <laughs> They say we're, we're, we're the bad guys because we're, we're, we're the banksters and it's a scam coin. I say you're ridiculous if that's your opinion. And I, I hope that you come to <laughs> develop some common sense at some point and see that's just not the case. And there's not going to be winner takes all in crypto. There's going to be X number of coins in the future that will have staying power. XRP, in my mind, will be one of them. And it's a source for good. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, write, or do. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. I'm just a guy on the internet with some opinions. That's it, okay? But uh, if you would, if you liked what you heard here, if you agree with anything that I say also, I would love it if you would take a moment to subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, if you could at least hit like, that really helps. Um, I, the way I understand it is that the algorithms, that, that you know, the more likes you get, the, the further you get bumped up in the, in, the, in the search engine on YouTube. And for a small guy like me with a tiny channel trying to get started, just know that if you're willing to do that, I, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to me. Uh, take care, and I'll be uh, posting another video again soon. Later, guys.